Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Thirsty Thursday. Hope everyone's having an awesome Thursday today and a great week at that. So in today's episode, we're going to be speaking on financial services, getting in from financial services into the world of cyber. And I have a great friend here tonight. But if you have any questions during the stream, please throw it in the chat and I'll get to it when I can. Or you can ask Kyle as well. So I want to go ahead and bring him in. He's going to go ahead and introduce himself and we'll get the show started. What's up, Kyle? Hey, Pat. How's it going, man? Good, good, good. How's uh, how's your night or how's your day? Uh, yeah, how's yeah. everything going? Yeah, it's been been a busy day. Uh, pretty good though. Uh, beautiful weather. Baseball season is kicking off. You know, feeling very much like spring. About seventy five degrees where I'm at. I've been working on my tan here the last week. Honestly, it's 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 been good. That's awesome. Yeah, I need to work on my tan too. And I live in uh, I live in the south, and I still don't get really tan. So uh, I get that. That's awesome. Yeah. So you are you a baseball fan? Um, yeah, in general. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that. Yeah, grew up going to games in St. Louis and stuff. Cardinals fan by by trade. But yeah, man, it's just, uh, you know, spring and fall, probably the two favorite seasons. And that's when baseball really just kicks off. Right. Cool. Awesome. So obviously for the folks watching, who is Kyle? And just tell me as little or as much as you want to go ahead and uh, share. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, so Kyle Smith and um, yeah, been in the cyber space, if you will, really all my life, I guess. I started tinkering with, you know, my own PC and computers and just trying to improve my MySpace page back in the day. Um, you know, it was one of the first major social media platforms, right? So just trying to in learn HTML and CSS to kind of improve my MySpace page, but kind of put it by the wayside. Honestly, I made fun of for that kind of stuff as a kid and just fell in love with, you know, sports and doing other things that uh, weren't really cyber and or IT related. So put it put it by the wayside and became a financial advisor uh, for about five years or so. So I went through the whole process of getting my Series 6, Series 7, Series 66. Uh, my ability to basically gives me my ability to not only sell, but also recommend certain um, securities out there, you know, assets, you should say stocks, bonds, these types of things that you might see. Uh, through uh, an investment bank or investment brokerage firm mm -hmm. and didn't so much enjoy that space. Uh, didn't enjoy kind of the sleaziness towards it, for lack of a better term, right? You're kind of selling products to people that may or may not need them just so you can get paid and kind of puts a, puts you in a bad spot from a, from a moral perspective, really. And that's where I was at. So I made the transition to cyber actually about five years ago. So I'm, I'm you know, formal, formal transition where I actually had a cyber job being paid for cyber Again, I'm, I was always dabbing in projects and such growing up as a kid, just never really made the dive to uh, make that full transition and actually get paid for it. So made a map, took a massive pay cut to get into the field, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, working, networking, uh, working hard, learning, you know, where I'm at today, uh, working in the offensive security space primarily. So I uh, didn't start in the offensive security pay, uh, space, as I don't think most people do, unless you're coming from like a programming or development background. But yeah, finally in that more of that uh, offensive space. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, working in the offensive security space, coming from you know financial background, what do you what do you recommend? Because I get this question, right? But I want to see your perspective. So, what was the the biggest hurdle for you to get into the offensive space or landing that first job in offensive, and just like, okay, now I'm an offensive security person, a red team or pen test or whatever they call us. Uh, what was that? What was that hurdle? Sure, that's in my eye. <laughs> now, honestly, it's um, there's a lot of hurdles, right? Like, uh, I don't know if there was one big hurdle necessarily, but, you know, anybody trying to get into the IT and or cyberspace is just going to be the experience, right? It's kind of that catch 22 of you don't have the experience, so we're not going to hire you, but we're not Gonna hire you. You can't get hired because you don't have the experience. So it's just mm -hmm. this very weird space for a lot of people out there nowadays. And there's a lot of jobs out there in cyber in general. But you know, as you see, it's just for the folks that are know what they're doing. They have 20 years experience. Or entry level gigs are very hard to to come by. So I guess I'll answer that in a, in a couple different ways. In the sense of you know, there's multiple hurdles. Uh, my my hurdle was just experience, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely had some web app interviews and things uh, while I was living in England and. It just didn't really go that well because I didn't 
fully understand what I was doing, right? So I had to put in the work and behind the scenes to actually um, uh, get my foot in the door, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Realistically, the biggest hurdle was just getting your foot in the door and and getting that first gig in IT, not necessarily cyber. I think that that was probably the biggest hurdle. But once I was there, I just asked a lot of questions, stayed curious, worked a lot of different tools, worked a lot of different teams, just bug people and ask for help. You'd be very surprised, I think, to see how many people will not only help you, but go out of their way. It's like kind of what you're doing, right? Like helping, helping everybody uh, subscribe to your channel and, and newcomers understand the world of cyber, right? Like who hasn't watched an InfoSec Pat video on how to, you know, uh, configure a domain controller? I, I know I have, right? So it's just one of those things that um, I, I guess I'm ranting a little bit now, but yeah, it's a, it's a multifaceted question for sure. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I, I think everyone's perspective and everyone's way to hurt or every hurdle, every way to get into the world of IT is so different, right? My stories may not line up with yours. Mine, you know, yours may not line up with the next person's. So that's why I always like to hear people's people's experiences getting into the world of cyber because like what mine, obviously, if you haven't heard, I'm sure you heard, like I got my PayPal hacked and that's what really intrigued me to get into cyber. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I didn't know you can get paid for stealing people's shit, you know, but uh, it is what it is, right? Like, it's like, oh, like I always thought that was only for the bad guys, right? Like, and then once I figured out that I was, I was still an undergrad at that time. And I was like, oh, there's this thing called, uh, back then it was information security. It wasn't cybersecurity. And then when I did my grad graduate degree, it was like cybersecurity and assurance from WGU, but that's awesome. So like what, for all right, so so now you're in the field of IT. You got into the field of cyber. Did you do any formal training, like as far as college certifications? What was your take on that? Like, how did you stay up to par with your with your skill set? Yeah, I got a long winded answer on that one too. I suppose um, I, I went to school at an engineering school, uh, really challenging in the math department, really uh, technical. Right. I studied economics and Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a math minor. I wanted to actually try to transition into that InfoSec um, programming space really is what I wanted to be doing. And the requirements were just ridiculous. Right. So I was always scared to just kind of put it out there and say, hey, I want to make that switch and full fully go into that field. And I just stuck with economics because that's what I knew. That's what I was good Mm -hmm. at okay, this is, this is the easy route more or less. Right. So, um, I guess I'm saying that because people that might be in a similar position, like that's okay. Maybe I should have taken a step back and took some different classes at, at a local community college, or maybe I should have, um, just made the switch in general and just tried it out. Right. And, and kind of take that dive. And I'm not saying I, I regret any of my decisions. I had a great time, uh, with the program that I was in it landed me my first, first, job as uh you know in the financial space but Mm -hmm. um that that was one of the first things i I noticed trying to educate myself in the cyberspace right but Mm -hmm. yeah i've been lucky to work at places that have sponsored a lot of certificates i've bought my own training i mean channels like yours uh john hammond of course i mean tcm like you know list goes on and on as far as the training goes and the things that you can be doing i'm a big hands-on guy like just anything, just let me watch a video. Let me get in, get in there and, you know, quote unquote, hack it myself. Right. Just, mm-hmm. And I think that's the beauty of a lot of uh, cyber influencers, right? You can just watch a video and understand what's going on. I can set up a server in my closet or in the cloud and then go tackle it that way. And that's what I prefer to do is just get mm-hmm. my hand, hands dirty, whether it's a raspberry Pi um, or just a VM and just try to configure things myself. So, what I'm saying there is it's a combination of formal training. It's a combination of just getting your hands dirty and, and learning yourself. And I'll probably have more to say about it, but just documenting that journey too, right? If you're trying to find a job or Mm -hmm. trying to learn, I don't think there's a better way to do that than do it yourself, document how you did it and then go teach somebody how to do it. Right. Like that, that that's just gonna. And I got that from, Keith Barker from CBT Nuggets. I remember doing CCNA, CCNP, even all the way up to the CCIE level training. And I remember him saying this, like, if you can teach it to someone, that means you really know it. So this is something so, so important. Like when you can teach it, 
that's when you really know it. And that's when I was like, okay, like, let's see if I really know things like you were saying about the setting up domain controllers, DNS, DHP, all the Windows stuff, because I say this a lot, like routing, switching, and, 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 and server stuff, cloud, VMware, that's really the heart of, of me. You know, that's where I come from. Right. And cyber is something I, I, I trickled in because of, of an incident that happened in my life. But if that incident never happened, I would probably still be a, you know, a VMware or, or route switch guy doing some other stuff, maybe MPLA, whatever. I don't know. But I think having that, that core experience will definitely be beneficial. And you were saying something interesting about like setting up your own Raspberry Pi, setting up your own VMs in the cloud. But you didn't mention any kind of like hack the box, try hack me and stuff like that. So what are your takes on those? And before I, before you answer that, like my take always is what you said first, I would always do first. The reason being is because when you connect to a VPN, right? Open VPN, you know, Kyle hack the box dot, you know, open V or whatever, V open, whatever the extension file is. And now you're in there, you, you, you spawn up the box, you ping it. But what exactly is happening with the network? Right. Right. What is that doing? So now when you set up like VMware or even Raspberry Pi, you, you have to connect it to a switch. You have to understand how to IP it, uh, address it, understand all that aspect. Even when you're doing VMs, right, you have to do NAT or bridge connection or, or, or host only. However, you have to connect it and you have to make that data traverse between each other. So I think that closes a gap of understanding the fundamentals of networking systems because now if you're tackling active or you're tackling forest for example for active directory and hack the box you know how is that ad configured when you configure it yourself and you understand okay what is adds or active directory domain services when you configure that what is sysfall what is fismo roles you know what is a schema like all this stuff like if you're going to try to attack it, you should understand what's behind the technology. That's just my input. Yeah, no, I, I think it's valid and, and I'm with you. I mean, everybody's seen that meme, right? Of that, that person walking up the stairs, like, you know, I want to be a penet penetration tester and they're starting at just you know, security plus and they're taking a massive leap forward. Right. So, I mean, yeah, it makes, it makes absolute, uh, a absolute sense um, that uh, people just kind of skip steps. I mean, the, the interesting thing you, you mentioned around that is like there is a benefit to it sure in the sense that you get you get exposed to things that you might not have been exposed to right if i see a certain web application running or a certain technology on a web application i might not necessarily see that unless i go do that hack the box of it and listen or watch an ipsec video or something along those lines right um but yeah as far as like the question around the training yeah i, I didn't i didn't mention it because there's so many now I was lucky enough to, just as I was getting into the industry, like I was using Udemy videos. So mm -hmm. I would go and I know Udemy got in a bunch of trouble, but we don't need to talk about that. But like whenever mm -hmm. they had sales for $10, I would go buy a Udemy video around mm -hmm. Wi-Fi hacking or, or just the ethical hacking playbook or whatever cheesy name those videos and those courses had. I would mm -hmm. buy those. I think it was Zed Security actually, yeah. like the very first one I, I watched too. around. Yeah, so he actually got me hooked on like the penetration testing and ethical hacking route, offensive security space. And then you started having hack the box, try hack me, TCM, all these people come out with, you know, a more structured approach to their training. I don't know if it's like this still, but the, you know, hack the box always had that kind of gatekeeping mentality of like, Hey, you got to hack into the site to register. I think I was listening, you know, I was watching one of your videos. I can't remember who it was with, but like, Maybe you bypass that just by putting in the registration link, right? So exactly. all these different ways to do it, which is great, but obviously it's not a great business model if you're trying to sell a subscription to someone. Mm -hmm. um, sure, you're going to have maybe the dedicated people doing it. Um, but no, those platforms are great. And they've only gotten even better, especially since like Offsec upgraded a bunch of their courses. Mm -hmm. Hack the Box UI has gotten a lot better. Try Hack Me. That's probably my, one of my favorites Mine anyway. Too. I mean, it's just such a fun, so many different rooms you can pop into. A lot of them are free. So it's just the barrier to entry is so low to that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't think it's, it's a good supplement. I don't think it can ever really, like no, none of them is going to be perfect between everybody learns in a different way. Absolutely. Right? They all have their own different paths. So for me, I can, it's kind of sporadic. Where do I start? 
And I know some mm-hmm. like here's an entry level path you can take and try hack me hack the box, but still like getting your hands on something, whether it's physical or, or virtual, but yet you can control and set up and configure like that just that goes beyond anything you can really teach because you're learning yourself. And I don't know who said it. I, I kind of to what your CBT nugget instructor mentioned, like if you can't explain it to like a five year old or can't explain it simply, mm-hmm. you, just don't, you don't understand it well enough. And I'm sure there's you know, there's a ton of topics that I can't explain well enough. So it's always fun to keep learning and um, hopefully these organizations you know, keep competing with each other. I think competition is good if they keep mm-hmm. rolling out with new features, new, uh, new, new rooms, new boxes. Like that is good for the industry as a whole because it forces other people. Because I know when TCM came out with his um, PEH, Practical Ethical Hacker. Um, yeah, I guess it was PEH originally. Now it's trans. You know, they had to rename it um, PNPT. But when he came out with that and had Active Directory involved and OSCP, it wasn't quite yeah. there yet with the active directory like they changed their attitude real quick because competition was introduced so yeah uh, I, I love seeing that kind of stuff right and we're all we're all only going to benefit from that yeah absolutely so speaking about like getting into the world of offensive security what what was i guess is a two part question what was your what was your intriguing part like what was like oh fuck I want to learn this or I'm interested in this, like web apps. I'm not interested in that. So whoever wants web apps, they can keep it right. Like my, my thing was like, okay, externals. Okay. Like active directory, we can utilize, we can compromise AD because I felt comfortable there. Cause I come from that world of system administration, system engineering. So attacking it and understanding what I was attacking was a lot easier for me than if I was just, you know, attack using burp suite and understand how, you know, intruder and all these damn damn complicated buttons work it was it's still it's still confusing to me like literally like i i'm not good with burp suite till this day like it's not that i'm not good with it i try to avoid it and when you avoid it you don't practice and if you don't practice you're gonna you know stay stagnant so what was your like i guess the two-part question what was your like uh interest like what part of offensive security were you interested in and what is your favorite? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I, I think originally it's just everything, right? You're a sponge. You're trying to do everything under the sun. And then you mm-hmm. realize, well, I can't do everything under the sun, at least not all, all at once, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think there's a layer to that in the sense of like you might think you want to do something specific and then you see some that shiny other object. For me, so it was, it was obviously like you know, penetration testing and, and just being – a glorified auditor, right, is kind of what penetration mm-hmm. testing is, but it's still fascinating to me. And I, I still love it, but like hardware hacking, like that stuff, those people are on another level, in my opinion. It's <laughs> really, really interesting to just, uh, you know, break break a part of the device, you know, devices that we use every day, break it apart and, and hack it, right, and see how it works. To me, that's really fascinating. I can't say I have any formal experience in doing it, but who hasn't taken apart a radio or something as a kid, mm-hmm. right? Uh, something in that manner. So I, I like that. I'm, again, I'm not portraying myself as a wizard by any means, uh, but I like that stuff. So if I had to choose my my life, that would definitely be it. Mm-hmm. I'm probably good at social engineering because of that financial services background. So so I think a good key is to realize like just because you're not somewhere that you think you are, like you should be or want to be, like it's okay. Your past experiences are still valid. Like I'm so thankful that I grew up in financial services industry because. I'm talking to millionaires every day. Mm-hmm. I'm a 20, I'm a 24 year old kid talking to millionaires, trying to sell them this, that, and the other, like you grow up fast and you yeah. learn how to act and you learn how to put a sentence together and send mm-hmm. emails and do all this formal adult stuff. Sure. So the social engineering aspect, right? Like know me, like me, trust me. Those are the three pillars that you have to have for any relationship to succeed. And if you don't mm-hmm. have that, so understanding that at an early age and then being able to come to different organizations and, Hey, I don't have all the technical skills right now today, but I'm, I'm driven. I can talk to people and I'll figure it out. Like you have that confidence. You're going to go pretty far. So social engineering is probably one of my favorites um, just for that reason. Right. It's kind of my where I cut my teeth, if you will. That's all financial like financial engineering. Uh, <laughs> fi- financial services is all social engineering when you really think about it. Right. Um, and I guess 
Dale Carnegie, right? His old book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence win, yeah. People. Like it, it's mm-hmm. it's very well. Look at TCM too, right? Like they just put out a course, maybe a cert too. Like OSINT, the OSINT Junior OSINT. Um, they did. That's probably their newer newer one. I'm talking about like a like how to prepare for your interview and like how to oh yeah P- improve your C R P or something. Yeah, that's something right. where you're. Yeah, improving your people skills though, right? Because it, it's yeah. so it's so overlooked. I don't care if you have all the technical experience at times. It's not always the best guy, it's the right guy, right? It's kind of like an old weird military army phrase, but it, again, it, it, it's very valid in a lot of times. So long-winded answer, but yeah, I think uh, hardware hacking, so cool to me, uh, fascinating. Daryl Highland, uh, if you guys ever get a chance to check him out, please do, I think. He was at DEF CON when I went a couple years back and he had a sick hands-on lab uh, that you're, you know, extracting firmware and, and cracking things is fascinating to me. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, so you said like, so for those people that don't understand hardware hacking, so when you say hardware hacking, like what, do you, what does that mean in your head? Like, or is it like reverse engineering, understanding the firmware, taking a medical device? Saying, for example, like you know, a pat. What is it that when you when you breathe, pat, pat like smear C- or whatever. Yeah, C- CPAP machine. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, you you know, there's firmware on that. Maybe you can compromise that. Yeah. Uh, CPAP machine. Yep. Yeah. So like maybe you know, like we have cars, right? Teslas. You know, we can do some stuff with Tesla. Like when I went to DEF CON last year, you know, there's car hacking. There's there there's plane hacking. Because a piece of hardware is something that a, a firmware runs on it. So. If you want to be a little more specific of, of which kind of hobby or what kind of devices that you like to hack, that'll be cool. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything specific. I guess anything that I can, um, yeah, just literally have in front of me and get my hands on that's affordable. Like I, I, you know, I can't afford a plane right now, right? Be lovely <laughs> if I could. Um, yeah, or a Tesla or something. But um, yeah. yeah, I don't have anything specific. I, I know I'm like I'm a part of a local hacker space. And honestly, it's, it's cool to just kind of grab like an old router or an old uh, piece of equipment that somebody threw away, still works, still plugs in, still charges, things like this. And you can just kind of break it apart and explore, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Raspberry Pis too, like they're fantastic. And what you got Flipper Zero nowadays that I guess you can hack that device itself, but you can also use that to hack other things, right? So yep. it's, um, yeah, I kind of all over the place with, with that, but anything, Anything that can be used on a day-to-day basis and, you know, obviously hacking would just be, hey, it's not intended to be used like this. Mm-hmm. So we're going to we're going to do it anyway. It's yep. just great. And that's that's interesting because I was at a family member's house back home in New York. It was two years ago. And uh, I told my is my cousin's house and he had a refrigerator, right? He had like a year old, something like that. And, you know, he's fancy playing his fucking Spotify through it and, and all this shit, you know? And I was like, I wonder if I can compromise his his fridge and fucking fuck with him, you know? And I did, right? Like, I just, you know, do a little Google searching and see if there's a, a vulnerability for that, for, that, uh, for that fridge. And I was like, oh, snap. I wonder if this exploit works. It took me a little while because I don't hack refrigerators every day. So it was actually interesting. That was something. And then he was like, yo, this shit's bugging out. And then I hacked his, his lights as well. Like I was turning off in, on his lights because he has uh, some cheap Chinese fucking, you know, Wi-Fi lights. But um, that was pretty, that's pretty cool. So like for those people that are listening, like if you have a piece of anything at home, a thermostat, a, a fucking anything, a camera, you know, like just to see if it's just tinker with it. Obviously, we're not condoning. Don't fucking hack your neighbor's shit or go don't don't hack something that, that you don't have permission to do so. But just have that curiosity because any any aspect of cybersecurity or excuse, more on the offensive security side is is curiosity right out of that box thinking. So. So you said something like, like okay, like a few years ago, we, we talked about DEF CON. So let's transition to like conferences. Have you been to any conferences or are you planning on doing any this year? Um, I have, yeah. So DEF CON for me, first time was, I guess, 2022 for DEF CON 30. Absolute riot. So much fun. Uh, I got a chance to meet a few friends like in person, you know, and it, it just was a great time. 
Um, people often complain about the costs and the expenses and such like that. It, it, honestly, it's well worth it to go at least once, no matter what area of um, IT cybersecurity that you're in, just go and have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would like to go up to the Wild West Hacking Fest. Yeah. I know they do that um, out this way in South Dakota. And I, I want to say it might be around the, like Sturgis or something too, like the time frame of Sturgis motorcycle rallies. Like I think that'd be like a dream trip of mine, like go knock both of those out in one trip. But uh, I don't have any planned this year. I think I'm going to take the year off. I've done local cons like B-Sides, which mm -hmm. if you guys haven't heard, like B-Sides are fantastic. Most places, most larger places have a B-Sides organization for you to either talk at or mm -hmm listen to talks and it's a great networking opportunity. So yeah, B-Sides local, absolutely been to. And uh, OWASP, my local OWASP chapter puts on something called Snowfrock and that is an absolute great time. It's more geared towards applications uh, and application securities and a lot of developers there. So it can be intimidating for folks that maybe don't have like this wicked C++ or uh, programming background. <laughs> but it's so much fun. They have, they have uh, monthly meetings and such. So that's probably, I, cons might be an aggressive word for like what I like to do right now, but it's more like monthly monthly meetings or your local DC chap, uh, DEF CON chapter, those types of things, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so. Yeah, so that'll transition to the, like the next thing I have on my mind, right? Like networking. You said something really interesting. You meet some cool folks, you got to network. We get to speak like I spoke at already three or two B sides, right? I, I spoke at B side Orlando and I spoke at B side Romania last week and I'll speak at B side and I'm doing a workshop at B side Tampa tomorrow morning. Right. So, so it's crazy. After this, I'm flying over to, to Tampa. So it should be an interesting. And then next week I'll be at hack space con. But so what is the importance of that, of that network? Like, like, we say networking. So say, for example, we can go on both sides, right? I'm already in cyber. I want to go, you know, do whatever. Or like, like I'm, I'm an IT support guy today. I want to get into the world of cyber. So what is like the importance for someone like you? Because you can answer, right? Because you came from a non-technical background, you know, professionally. And then you got into the professional background, excuse me, the professional cyber and going to DEF CON and going into these local B-sides. So, yeah. Speak on that. That'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's as important as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, but if you're if you're not where you're at and you're not networking, then that's probably one of the first things I'll tell you to go, you know, challenge yourself with, right? And networking doesn't have to be this thing where you're dressed up in a polo, shaking hands, kissing babies, you know, yep. at, at a happy hour. Like it can be that, sure, but it can be as simple as being a part of a, a Discord community, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a member of like VetSec, which is an awesome veteran organization, uh, works to get people into cybersecurity from the military. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating the people and the backgrounds that you experience there. And I have some some mentors and mentees in that organization that we don't talk often, but it might be once a quarter. We just check in with each other. And I've actually only ever met one person in person at a B-Sides talk. Right. But but I still have that communication. So it's it's if you're trying to go somewhere specific, it's massively important. If you're where you want to be, okay, great. Like that's totally fine. You don't necessarily have to network, but um, people, especially, I guess a maybe misconception would be that, oh, you know, an IT nerd's very introverted. They don't like talking to people. That can definitely be the case a lot of the times, uh, myself included. Uh, I call myself an ambivert, which is the weirdest thing ever but you know extroverted and introverted at the same time just kind of depends on the day so very important if you're starting out for me personally i worked at a large financial organization as a financial advisor a few of my friends that i worked with throughout this program they left years before me honestly i after i left i hit them up asked them hey what are you guys doing what, what's going on they were working for um, a startup in the cloud space I'm like, where can I help? You know, is there any is there any options for me here? And they sent me a few roles and they said, hey, we think you'd be a good fit for these things, just given your background and like your lack of experience. And I didn't ask questions. I just applied, did my best and ended up getting the job. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. beggars can't be choosers at that point. It was a massive pay cut when I made the transition. 
you know, I'm getting paid very handsomely as a financial advisor, a lot of commission, but I'm doing very well to say, no, I don't want to do this and cut my, cut my pay by a third, right? When you got bills to pay, it's pretty scary. Mm. Um, but without that network, without me reaching out and just kind of biting the bullet and saying, hey, I need, I need help more or less, you know, what you have for me. Like you'd be surprised at who can help you and what can, what things can lead to. So very, very important in my opinion, no matter what, because you never know when you're going to have to ask for a favor. You never know when you're just going to be curious and want to learn about a company. Like people will, will talk to you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's super important. And, you know, going back to my, you know, going back to like even YouTube, right. I'm, I'm the total opposite. I'm not an introvert. I'm not a nerd. Like I'm the total opposite of, of, of those kind of people. So like I just hit up people when, when I first started my YouTube channel, I hit some people up that I watch. I'm not going to mention names. I watched and I heard crickets. And to me, it's like fucked up. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, who do you think you are, son? Like, like and it was such a it was such an experience for me. And I was like, because, you know, I, I you probably know, like I bowled all my life. I paid for college bowling. I made a lot of money throwing a fucking bowling ball down the lane and hitting 10 pins. You know, I made a lot of money. So it's like, if someone ever hit me up for bowl, like, hey, man, how do you hook the ball? Whatever. I want to play this 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 line or, or this oil pattern or whatever. Like, I would show them, like, it was just naturally for me to, like, help people. So when someone's saying on a YouTube channel or an influence or whatever the hell you want to call them, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm always quote unquote here for you. If you have any questions, always uh, reach out. And then I didn't, I didn't need help with anything. I just needed to know what do I need to do to get started on YouTube? Like what kind of camera? I'm not asking you to fucking buy it for me. I just want a list. So what do I need okay. to do? You know, like okay. what do I need? And the only person I, I'll say the name, the only person that answered me was Keith Barker. And he was the last person that I would think that answered me. Cause that guy was like, you know, he knows it. Like, Right. I watched this guy. It's like a dream guy, right? It's like, holy right. shit, this guy's a fucking god. That's why he's the OG of IT, right? right? And when he just like, hey, man, like get Camtasia, get this, get this. This is what I use. This is. And then he's like, you know what? Here's my number. Call me up and we can have a chat. I was like, holy shit. It's like, you know, if you're a big, I don't know. It's like getting LeBron's number for me. And uh, and now I can say if Keith, if you watch, is like this guy's like a, a big brother, a big uncle, you know, like such an awesome person. And it's like, Going back to what you said, you never know who's going to respond and never be scared. You know, yeah, you're probably going to get those schmucks that fucking ignore you or, you know, they think they're too big or too good or whatever. Fuck them. You know, that's what I got to say. And to just just keep pushing and, you know, someone's going to help you. And maybe that, le you know, that person that you least expect it because that's what happened to me. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, a couple of years, left, four years later, here we are. Now we're just shooting the shit with people and, yeah. and I'm trying to help people in the community. And, and hopefully I can be like Keith one day. Right. Um, yeah. And I just feel like the most important thing is, you know, giving back and, and, and learning from each other because this community is not a community without, you know, helping each other. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head and that, uh, that story is actually incredible. I have, I have one similar, maybe not as uh, profound, but yeah, I reached out to like uh, uh, the senior technology director of like this stock exchange, right? This stock exchange that sees millions, if not trillions of dollars flow through every so often and, and just reached out on LinkedIn. Like, Hey, I had, a, I read flash boys. I, your name was mentioned in the book. I had a question thinking, you know, never going to hear back from this guy. Right. <laughs> Yeah, hits me up like, oh, great question, Kyle. Here's what I think, blah, blah, blah. And so you'd be surprised how many people would actually just take a moment out of their day to just respond to a question, help you out. Not everybody's going to do it. It's just mm -hmm. if it's like an obvious question or like, you know, okay, yeah. you know, it's out there, sure. Uh, kind of reminds me of like DX Underground, right? Like, what's the mm -hmm. password? What's the password? Like, we all yeah. know what the password is. Stop asking. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah it's just fascinating how many people are out there to help. Um, in, in, the, in the Army, we had a phrase like, you know, there's only one thief in the army. Everybody else is just trying to get their shit back. And I feel like that in mm -hmm. this community, but with, with knowledge and trying to help, like somebody's helped me get my foot in the door and improve my position where I'm at today. So I'm just trying to get to that point of where I feel like I've paid it forward enough. I don't know if mm -hmm. I'll ever be there because there's always somebody helping me out. So, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, definitely help people. Yeah, exactly. So we're talking about helping people. We're talking about networking. So what is the importance? Uh, you touched on a little bit, but what is the importance of people skills in IT and cybersecurity? Because we can all hack shit. We can all, you know, be a wizard on a an operator on a computer. But what about the soft skills? What is what is the importance of that? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, certs like OSCP, PNPT, like they make you write a report, you know, like mm -hmm. soft skills are important, being able to read, write effectively, uh, you know, you can put the sentence together, sure, but can you put a sentence together that's going to be valuable to the CISO of an organization, right? Mm -hmm. can, can you can you do that in a clear, concise, effective manner? Can you be trusted to lead a test from start to finish? Can you, uh, or an assessment from start to finish, no matter what, what that is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you be trusted to explain to someone, you know, a, a senior director, a director, what just happened with an incident, you know, if you're in a sock or something. So it's massively important. People want to hone in on the technical skills. Sure. But every day you're communicating with teammates, you're communicating with other teams. So you have, I mean, just you're probably communicating 90% of the day, if not more some days, just trying to coordinate things and figure out how to get to that next point and move things along in your mm -hmm. position. So it's, it's, it's massively important. And it's kind of, I actually had a colleague not long ago, like they mentioned like, Hey, I'm trying to work on like my soft skills. And I love that because people won't admit it. Right. Mm -hmm. They won't necessarily come out and say, yeah, I am terrible at public speaking or I'm terrible at making connections with people and, and being honed in with my soft skills and my emotions. Right. Like it, it's tough. And it was really refreshing to hear them say that honestly. And I think more people should, should be in tune with that side of their career path. Yeah. And, and you, and you said something and yes, own got to be able to communicate your findings to someone that has no clue about those vulnerabilities. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's a true. So I, I guess it's more of a personal question. Do you plan on doing any talks? Would you ever want to do anything? And if, if so, what would you, what, what do you think you would talk about? Yeah, I've done a few talks. I've done some okay. stuff for my local DC DEF CON chapter. Um, um, I've done some talks at, oh, I did a talk at OWASP actually here, here most recently in March. And I was denied for B-sides last year, but I'm sure I'll put something together later this year. I think it's happening around November usually in my area. So I'll have, have B-sides to maybe apply for. Uh, but I also, I, I also want to focus on some search too. So I'll probably put that by the wayside, but I don't know, you know how it goes. You get that CFP notification. You're like, oh, I do have this in the back of my mind, or I have this kind of project I've been working on. So yeah, I, I would definitely like to continue that. And we talked about it earlier, right? If, if for nothing else, it's just so you can teach it to others and learn yourself or you mm -hmm. might have a question, you might have a question come through that you're like, yeah, I never thought about it that way. And that's just going to improve my knowledge and my expertise. So it, it's helpful because it challenges you just to put yourself out there. You network. I've met a ton of people at conferences and at talks and, and it's fantastic. It's never, never a bad time after the fact. I'm never like, oh, I wish I didn't go. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't have that talk. I never have thought that. Yeah, that's cool. And you said you're working on, you know, this is a transition to the next thing I have on the list. Like you said, you're uh, working on some certifications. What certifications do you have today? For those that don't know who Kyle is. Yeah, what do I have? Um, well, we mentioned Series 7, 66, uh, all that stuff in yeah. the financial industry, right? It's kind of funny. I mean, I've, I've been through the uh, cert game well before my IT career just in that space. But yeah, I'm technically, I have my certified financial planner designation. It's not active, but I, you know, I have it and I could pay $200 a year to keep it active, but there's no reason, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have that, but yeah, from obviously IT perspective, I have, you know, classic security plus, pen test plus, uh, some Azure certification that might not even be active anymore. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, EJPT, which is eLearn Securities Junior Penetration Tester, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, studying for the OSCP right now, you know, that's the big one. So just trying to trying to get through that and stay stay motivated to get through the course, get the bonus points, and and get through that. And I probably have 
a few more I can't remember off the top of my head. CEH. No, no, I don't have CEH. Sorry. It's uh, certified SOC, CSA, certified SOC analyst is what it is, but it is oh. from EC Council. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's not the CEH, but I guess the Pentest Plus is like the equivalent of CEH, yeah. but yeah. with CompTIA. Comp so, um, yeah, highly recommend them if you can get them. I mean, they, they look good on the um, the resume, of course. And depending mm -hmm. on if you're looking at like DOD jobs and such, like certain certifications put you in a better spot to have have different jobs. Yeah. So Owen asked, do you plan on taking any uh, TCM certs since we mentioned them before? Yeah, I would love to actually. I would absolutely love to. And I know they have like the veterans discount, which is great. Um, I have probably most of their courses that I've just bought outright, you know, on sale and or just before they've moved that subscription model. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I would absolutely love to. And I, I think a part of my OSCP prep, not to say it's not harder. I'm not saying any of that. I just think because it's more flexible with most of TC, I think all of them actually, like you get two tries typically for mm -hmm. the exam. And I probably prefer the material over OSCP's, over offsex material anyway. Um, but that's besides the point. I think taking the, their junior penetration tester cert or their PNPT, like that would probably be good preparation for the OSCP. So yes, in short, I would like to absolutely. It's on my radar. Uh, I've just not taken the, um, uh, cause I was, I took all the courses before they came out with these certs. Right. So it's kind of, yeah. like I took the courses I'm moving on. I haven't really looked back, but yeah, they have great stuff and I highly recommend them. Um, I don't get paid to say that or anything. I just think they're a great org and done. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. Heath, you know, like he's, he's, he's done some good stuff and, and I'm super proud of him and like, you know, where he came from his, you know, his Udemy course is one Udemy course. And he's like, yo, son, I just want to change the game. And, you know, yeah, he got a little backlash or whatever, some beef with, with Offsec or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm super, I'm super glad that he kept his foot down and kept pushing forward. So Heath, if you ever watched this fucking kudos, you know, you my dude, but, um, yeah, the PJPT, that's one I would like to like I would like to do the the PMPT, PJPT. And and I was studying hardcore in the in in the middle the in the beginning of the year. And then I'm like, okay, like then I had some talks, then I had like uh, you know, some conferences, and I'm like, oh shit, now I need to prep for a con you know, get this all going and then life takes over. But I I, I need to and this is gonna go into my next question about your OSCP. Are you prepping by yourself or are you you know, hanging out with other people, studying with others and just like, you know, holding, holding them accountable and hold, you know, they can hold you accountable to the uh, studies. Yeah. I, I wish I, I could say I was, I mean, I'm in the discords and such and, and collaborating with others. Sure. Um, but no, not, not right now. And I, what I found is when people want to do that, it's either a, like they're in completely different time zones across the world. Yeah. Um, or it's, or it's just, you know, we're, we're completely separate in where we are with our journeys, meaning like yeah. they just might've started the course I just finished or vice versa. And it's just really tough to align. And in a perfect world, like you would be attached to somebody and like you could start at the same day and mm -hmm. just keep, keep accountable. But that's been my experience. I'm sure it works for some folks. Uh, I luckily have great mentors as well that have just tremendous and give me suggestions and giving me advice and, and helping me along. Or like, Hey, if I'm stuck on a box, I'm like, Hey, what do you like? What do you think? Like, Oh, I've never used that tool. Okay. I'll check that out. So that's kind of been my approach, honestly, a lot of, you know, videos and a lot of fumbling through and just uh, scratching my head, which is fine. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. No, not actually pairing up with anybody. Gotcha. So, so I guess I, uh... I just want to ask it like, why did you choose the OSCP over, for example, like PMPT? Like any any reason? Uh, I, I think yeah, it's just always been that gold standard for the longest time, right? Mm -hmm. it's, and, and and it's just one of those things that you know, why not have it? Like everybody's mm -hmm. every, everybody's seemingly asking for it. Um, that that you as far as employers go. Um, yeah. And honestly, they've revamped the course, and the course is a lot better than it was. I took. Mm -hmm. like, I've actually like taken both of the, the pen 200 courses or whatever it would be. And uh, they revamped the material. I know it's, 
we don't have to get in like the politics of like what they did after yeah. they revamped the courses. You know, they laid a bunch of people off, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. And um, the courses, in my opinion, are a lot, a lot better um, than they were maybe a couple of years ago, just from mm -hmm. content and understanding and, and comprehension perspective. So I don't have a great reason. It's just more so the it's, gold it's, standard. It, it's time. Yeah, it's time. And I think, you know, they're gold standard of the industry and they have been for a while. But PJPT, man, it's, uh, it's hard to ignore. Yeah, and that's the reason why I bring that up is because I, you know, I feel if you're entry level, like I haven't taken, I haven't taken a PJPT, I haven't taken a PMPT, but everyone, everyone that I talk to, um, obviously doing the PEH course, and, and I'm just talking about the PJPT at this point. Uh, from everyone that was probably about ten people already, or eight people, eight to ten, that has taken that exam. You know, obviously, like you said, we, we, we talk, we ask people, hey, what's up? How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. You took your exam. You know, how, you know, what did you feel about? We obviously they aren't telling me what the exam is about, but 89 or 90% of the people, like, okay, if you do the Active Directory section, you can ace the exam. Right. And I talked to two people and I was like, okay, you can say yes or no. Or one person told me you're on the right track. The other one said, I can't tell you shit. And um, I was like, okay, so is it like this? You know, like, you know, like like how he teaches us to 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 do. You know, you have your Marvel, your Hydra DC, you have your Punisher, yeah. you have your Spider Man, or whatever the fuck he does. And um, yeah. is it, it, you know, is it that? Is it two machines? You like listening? Then you have your Cali box. You listen with responder, listening for a hash, and go crack your hash and get low print. Like exactly what he was saying. Right. And everyone's saying that's pretty much the exam. And I'm like, all right. And I don't know why the fuck I'm bitching out. You know what I mean? Like I could probably do it tomorrow, but yeah, you're the AD wizard, man. You'd have no problem with it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just that, that the unknown, right? Like when you have, when you're like, right. it's like, oh man. And that, that's the only right. reason. And even Heath himself, He's like, dude, you're fucking ace the exam. Like I was texting him like just before, like when he, I think he went to New York last year or something like that. I'm like, yo, I just want to do this exam. It's like, dude, just do it. You, 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 right. You're not going to have yeah, a problem. Gonna it. Well, it's funny. Like so many other people, right. Have faith in you and confidence in you, but like you're, you're your own worst critic, right? I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm just saying in general, everybody is like, mm -hmm. that, right. We're like, oh, I, I can't do this or I'm not worried about that. And. Yeah, it's just one of those things like, hey, let's just jump in. And I get it, though. It takes a it takes a second to do that. And like leaving my career, that was a big decision, right? Like, yeah. I'm not, not comparing it to an exam. I'm just saying like how that confidence in yourself mm -hmm. is is challenging. Yeah, man. Um, that's a leap of faith, you know? Yeah. Can, that's can a, we talk? Go ahead. Sorry. Like, can, we, can we talk about, I got some thoughts to share like around breaking in the industry. I know we talked about it. And I, yep. I think this is just, I, I bring it up because I, I talk about it with my mentees a lot. Mm -hmm. in the in the vet sec org and i i think again like the confidence thing worries people so i don't know if anybody knows who like rick rick rubin is but he's like a famous uh, music producer has worked with everybody under the sun has a very interesting way of going about like he has no technical ability apparently he just unlocks the potential in people mm. uh so you like the Tony Robbins of music or, or, or something, something like that. Tony Robinson of music or whatever. Um, but anyway, um, like if you're trying to break in the industry, like just really stop and think to yourself, like, okay, is this going to help me land the gig I want or push me in the right direction? And the, the answer is no, like just stop. There's an old uh, crew coach, right. That told his team, like, look, if it doesn't make the boat go faster, then why are we doing it? Right. Mm -hmm. like, why are we doing it? And take that into your career. Like if it doesn't help me get to the point I'm trying to be, why am I doing it for them? It was like eating healthy and running and exercise. Oh, that makes sense. But like for us, it's obviously going to be like, okay, is this exam going to help? Is this course going to help? Is this is networking going to help? And take it from that approach and just get your hands dirty. Right, guys. Like if you're trying to break into the industry, start a blog. I don't care if you are interested in hardware hacking, social engineering, uh, traditional penetration testing, purple teaming, whatever it is, start a blog and start writing. And Rick Rubin mentioned, this is coming full circle. I promise. Rick Rubin has mentioned like, just do it for yourself. Screw everybody else. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Write, write it for yourself. You don't have to get out there and create something like a number one hit single for the world. 
we don't care about the world. We're just trying to do this because we enjoy it and we want to be doing it. So mm -hmm. start your blog. Write about how you solved the problem, how you stood up the infrastructure, what you can't, like how you troubleshooted. That is going to go so far in an interview. You can sit down with your potential employer and say, oh, yes, I actually keep a blog about this. Here you go. It'd be great if you read it and give me feedback on it. Right. Start a blog. Put yourself out. It could be through medium. It could be if you're trying to do infrastructure stuff. I know you're an infrastructure guy, Pat. So like, start build your own web server. Right. And start it from scratch and mm -hmm. kind of do it that way. So. I, I wanted, I came into this talk really wanting to chat about that. Uh, and I just kind of forgot until now. So I'm glad I got to get it out, but yeah, just start a blog, write, do projects and do it for yourself. Put it out on LinkedIn, put it out on Twitter and just don't care about what other people say. Take feedback and take it well. Yes. But don't, don't worry about if you got something wrong or if this wasn't the right way to hack the box, literally like it's okay. Just put it out there and everything else will, will follow in place. Yeah, and I, I just, I have a follow-up on that because I, like I mentioned, like, I don't care about feedback. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I don't, I don't take it to the heart. But when you start, I'm just saying this because I had some harsh, I have an actual story um, that someone said something really cruel to me, you know, because, you know, I have, I've said this in many things. I have a disability, right? So like I was dealing with something like reading something on, on like a hack the box or try hack me or whatever. And I was reading it slow. You know, I was like, okay, trying to really comprehend what I was reading. Right. right? So one kid said, I, I read like I have down syndrome. Right. And I'd seen that kid in DEF CON and I almost wringed his fucking neck, you know, cause it's like, don't be a dick. That's, that's one thing. Like, yeah, if you want to give your feedback, if you want to say, Hey man, like, you know, like maybe you should have done it this way. It would have probably saved you a few steps. Yeah, that's cool. But like when you start being a, you know, a dick, I think it's really, really effed up, you know, like be, be nice, you know, like yeah. you don't, you don't know what anyone's going through behind the camera or behind closed doors. Like you don't know what, what people are like, you know what I mean? Everyone has their struggles. Everyone has their thing. Just, that's just my experience. And that kid's lucky. That's all I got to say. <laughs> but, no, uh, no, I, I, echo that sentiment in the sense of uh, I kind of look at it like uh, like improv, right? I love analogies mm -hmm. if you guys haven't mm -hmm. already figured that out. But like, yes, and is improv, right? Like, hey, yeah, mm -hmm. here's some feedback. And, and I think, yeah. you know, and I, it was great, right? And, and maybe I would have done this differently, right? So you can always, and that's where like the social skills really help. Like, obviously, that person that said that to you probably didn't have the best of social skills and didn't understand and you know realize and, and that's today's technology right i can sit behind a phone text something mean i don't really see that person's reaction like that's the issue with that mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah be nice be kind and most people are that's the beauty the beauty of it right no matter what's mm -hmm. going out in the world especially in the cyber infosec community most people are nice and willing to to lend a hand yeah and, and that's true and obviously you're going to have some of those oddballs and you know I just, I just feel as though like, just, just be careful too. Like, because you never know what people are going through. Just like you said, be nice. And, and right. you never know who you're going to run into. You don't know, you know, like for example, I was in Romania last week, right? If someone was, you know, talk shit across the, the ocean, they didn't know I was going to be showing up there a year later. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't know where people are going to end up. So just be careful and just like, just be nice that it's not even be careful like and don't be like i said don't be a schmuck but i know we have a few more minutes if we have any questions for kyle and myself like you know throw it in the chat and um yeah we can take some q a because i i have about a four hour drive over to the west coast so i want to try to get there before midnight so uh yeah if there's if there's no questions obviously uh I, I, I'll ask and, you know, if, they, if there's anyone that wants to connect with you, is there a way that people can connect or just ask you questions if they have anything after the fact? Yeah, I prefer connections over carrier pigeon. Um, no, I, I say that I don't really I don't keep a social media presence. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Like yep. I'm, I'm semi on LinkedIn, but yeah, I don't really like I'm on Twitter at, at Hexec, H-E-C-K-S-E-C, -E Hexec. Uh, but, I, you know, I rarely check it anymore. So, you know, reach cool. out. You got questions. That's fine. If you're a veteran in VetSec, 
yeah, go for it. I will definitely uh, talk to you on VetSec, but that's probably my biggest social media presence right now is that Vet VetSec Slack channel. So, What's man. your favorite Metallica song? <laughs> oh, favorite song? That's that's yeah. It's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one. Honestly, you're gonna hate this answer, but I love the saint anger album that's like their most hated album but i i think rick rubin was maybe on that one and eh, maybe he wasn't i can't remember i love saint anger's album and probably any of those songs are just all kicky in the pants and i love them so i know it's like the least favorite metallica album for people but that one is my favorite not a song just their album sorry so I, I have a question about the OSCP. Do you have a yeah. plan that you're going to take it or like, where are you in that process? Like, where are you in the process or, and you know, when are you going to take the exam? When do you think you're going to be ready? Um, that's a good question. It'll probably be later this year at some point, probably if I can do it before football season, uh, that'd be great. I'm a big football fan. I'm not trying to study and watch <laughs> football at the same time. So uh, yeah, I'll probably take it before the fall sometime. I got some trips and stuff planned, which obviously throw a wrench in that. Mm -hmm. My plan of attack is really just to go through, double back on cheat sheets, make sure like everything that I have is just not automated, but like I don't have any questions of, oh, I see this, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I see A, I'm going to do B. Obviously, mm -hmm. you got you to think outside the box. You got to really uh, uh, try, but um, that's where I'm at. I'm probably going to go through review the PDF, you know, make sure I got my cheat sheet squared away, watch a lot of IPSEC videos, watch a mm -hmm. lot of act, watch a lot of your active directory videos, just make sure I'm really got the fundamentals down and, and attack it from that way. So cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know, I'm a resource. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to do uh, if anyone from PJ uh, from PJPT from TCM is, is viewing and I, I need to hit up Alex and cause he'd been, you know, telling me to uh, tackle the PMPT. But I think I want to do it after these conferences. I'm probably going to study one week, fucking hardcore yeah. the AD section, Good. and just and just uh, just schedule it. I think I just need to do it and and stop procrastinating. I think I'll probably make a video and like, okay, I, I scheduled it. This is my date, so you know people know it's out there. And it's like, okay, now fuck, now I have it a date. Serious, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you hold yourself to it, yeah. And, and obviously, I, it's like, because I'm a big hockey fan, right? I'm a big Ranger fan. So it's like, man, like, hot, you know, like in your neck of the woods, they're actually playing pretty well, your team's out yeah. there. So yeah. um, like the Rangers, obviously, hopefully they stay and win the President's Trophy. But the playoffs start, what, in two weeks? So it's yeah, like, man, man like, <laughs> I want to try to like, because once playoffs starts, I ain't touching my computer. You know, after five o'clock, I go to gym and it's hockey. But uh, did you, watch, did you see that line brawl between the yeah, Rangers and oh, yeah, last gosh. night and the I Devils? Love that. That's oh, that is wicked. That's yeah, incredible. Rumpy. I, I thought he was gonna get a little more. I thought he was gonna have a little more success. I don't know if he just hasn't been because he hasn't been playing for some time. Like he missed a few games. I don't know if he forgot to punch the bag before or something. <laughs> because with even with Reeves, if right. you saw in the fight with Reeves, I thought Reeves was gonna fuck him up. You know what I mean? Because Reeves right. is, is a veteran. He got a couple licks, and then with right. the Philly guy, I forgot who he's fought in Philly. And then, like, I was at the game when uh, the Islanders played when his first game in the outdoor game in Jersey. I was at that oh, game, nice. and uh, when he dropped the gloves, I was like, Oh, shit, who the hell is this kid? I didn't even know who the fuck he was. Right. I was like, And everyone was saying, even Reeves was like, Yo, this kid's he's gonna be trouble. And when I saw him fight last night, I was like, Yo, I thought you can couple get a little couple more licks, and I think, like, uh, uh like Miller, uh, Keandre Mira, Miller, like I saw a little bit of his fight. He, I never seen him fight. Like he's a big kid. He plays for Rangers and I'm like, wow, oh, this kid got, you know, some licks. Maybe you should throw the, you know, the gloves down a little more, but, I, uh, I, it's insane. I, I can barely fight as it is, let alone on skates. Those guys just, you know, so talented. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome to watch no matter what type of fan you are sports or not it's it's impressive you know yeah and, and it is because you're on skates it is a technique because you can just slip and yeah. but uh awesome so uh yeah Pe yeah kev yeah hopefully we got this and I, I need to i need to make a video probably when i get back from from this thing these conferences just make it and uh get it get it going but i i really appreciate it and um you know i really appreciate you coming on and thank you so much stay in touch 
And yeah, if you have any last qu uh, last words, uh, and we can call it a night. No, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. This has been awesome. Uh, never done one of these. So yeah, appreciate it. Love the, love the live format. I watch your videos, man. So yeah, I know we're, we're friends and we talk, but I'm also a fan. So just, just really happy for you and impressed with what you're doing and uh, looking forward to, you know, seeing what you continue to put out, Pat. So thanks for having me, man. Much love, dude. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it guys. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments after. And, uh, if I don't, you know, if Kyle doesn't see it, if it's for Kyle, I can always get it to him. So don't worry. And yeah. thank you so much and have a beautiful night. Take care guys. Yeah.